So I'm back in the United States after having been in Asia on a great trip to Singapore and Hong Kong. And in the U.S. media, there continues to be a lot of discussion of the Keystone Pipeline. And I'd like to share a couple of thoughts about the economics of boycotts and, uh, for environmentalists, the economics of drawing a line. So two recent articles, uh, this one in Forbes is very well written. And this second link is this New Yorker piece. The New Yorker is this intellectual magazine with the fancy cartoons. This New Yorker has a, has a real nice piece, um, nice of, let me show you the next slide. I recommend reading both of these if you're interested in Keystone. But let's go to the next page so I can start to make my points. So this handsome guy is a multi-billionaire. And the New Yorker gives a long profile of him, of how he made his money. But uh, like other billionaires, I think of Mike Bloomberg, he's trying to make the transition to being um, a selfless leader, sort of. A, 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 and he, it, it's apparent that he may want to run for higher office. And this gentleman has embraced uh, opposing the Keystone Pipeline as a key part of, uh, I think he genuinely believes that it would, it's bad public policy for President Obama to, uh, pr to permit the Keystone Pipeline. And I'll show you a map of that in a second. But I think he's also trying to use this issue to bundle himself to this issue uh, to build some green credibility and perhaps run for being governor of California. So uh, killing a couple of birds with one green stone. So here's the usual map of Keystone. Uh, there's been a discovery and technological advance. So up in Alberta, there's a, a huge amount of oil that can be accessed. And these pipelines, the green line is what already exists, bringing this stuff into the United States. And the dotted red line is what would bring it to refineries in Texas to be turned into gasoline. So the interesting economics here is the following. To mitigate the challenge of climate change, we need fossil fuel resources to not be used. How do you keep these resources in the ground? One way would be for the Prius and other green substitutes uh, to, to become very low cost. But a, another way to keep the, the fossil fuels in the ground and not burned and thus not creating greenhouse gas emissions is to not produce the complementary infrastructure like pipelines uh, which which create profits if we have a pipeline that and what a pipeline does is it connects the oil refiners to the source of the gas then there's gains to trade the alberta owners of the resources will extract it and sell it to the oil refineries who will turn it into gasoline who will then sell it to people like you and me and so there's sort of this argument that it, it, there's an implicit claim that if you don't build the pipeline, the resources stay in the ground and thus don't get burned. I think that's a little bit naive. Uh, for the owners of that resource in Canada, they have the option of getting them to the west of Canada and the west U.S. and shipping them to Asia. So this really brings you back to the economics of boycotts. We know in the economics of boycotts that if uh, a charismatic figure can get all consumers to agree to comply with the boycott, whether it's boycotting a racist um, company that, that sells food. If we can all agree we're not going to purchase from that company, we can punish that company and change its behavior. But if only half the population participates in the boycott and the other half do not, that company may experience no reduction in profit, even though it's being a bad citizen, because it just sells more of the product to, to those who choose not to be part of the boycott. This is sort of a free rider issue. So in Asia, if nations like China it can choose to contract with Alberta, then if, if the U.S. doesn't build the pipeline, the same resources still get used. It's just there's some more trade costs of getting these heavy resources from Canada to China. And so the key issue here is to think about, could the pipeline, could, could opposing the pipeline really be a game changer? And a guy like Bill McKibben has to argue that it's about credibility and changing expectations. He has to be uh, environmentalists to really get worked up about Keystone, have to tell a slightly complicated story that we're at sort of a tipping point in terms of reducing our greenhouse gas emissions, that he, if there's the expectation that it's going to get harder and harder to access these resources, it's sort of a peak oil argument. So in the case of peak oil, it's been argued that the electric vehicle is more likely to arise as a product if we think peak oil is happening, that the price of gas is rising. 
to block the Keystone oil pipeline is a type of peak oil again. We know that the, the, the resources exist, but if we make it hard to tap into, because we don't build the pipeline connecting to the refineries, then from simple supply and demand, the price of gas rises. So the environmentalists have to tell a general equilibrium story that they're raising the world price of oil by opposing this pipeline. And with these discoveries taking place all over the world, that's unlikely to be the case. Uh, but, but again, their intentions are in the right place of how you reduce the consumption of fossil fuels. But inhibiting trade, uh, especially during a time when there's un ongoing unemployment, uh, has consequences. And there's a reason that President Obama is likely to not side uh, with the environmentalists in this case. I want to close. So my friend Jim Bushnell of UC Davis has an interesting post on the Berkeley webpage the Berkeley Energy webpage that I suggest that you take a look at if these in issues interest you. Because he, uh, most economists, including myself, uh, don't see uh, the, the economics of blocking this Keystone Pipeline. I think it, it's a worthy goal, but I think it's small potatoes because of the general equilibrium effects. The world price of gas is not going to fall uh, because we build this pipeline. Or to turn that around, uh, the the environmental benefits of peak oil are not going to be realized if we if we block this pipeline, and so uh, that 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 this the, what building the pipeline will do is it will benefit Canada and it will benefit the refineries. But I perhaps I could be corrected, but I do not believe that it will have a large impact on the world price of gasoline. And so uh, instead, this is allowing gains to trade in a market where there's an existing externality to be allowed to continue. And so um, that's it.